This is Karen. Welcome back, everybody. I am Charles. I mean Shane. <laughs> Today we're looking at part two of our story called Charles, Charles okay. and the vocabulary words are troublesome. Troublesome. Patricia did her best to rid her garden of troublesome weeds. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. Your mom's dress was completely inappropriate to wear to a child's birthday party. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Visibly. Visibly. Amber was visibly unhappy after the teacher yelled at her. Anxious. Anxious. Taylor is anxious about meeting his girlfriend's parents for the first time.、Mm, occasional. Occasional. My uncle likes to go on the occasional fishing trip. Okay, so we're still talking about this boy named Charles. Mm-hmm.、Right? The naughty boy who always causes a lot of trouble at school. Right. So Lori continues to keep telling his parents. About all the naughty things that Charles is doing at school. So actually,、uh, Charles' name became like a household name in Lori's home. They're always talking about him. Right. So it's naughty, naughty, naughty. But he also would do some good things. Charles. So Lori would tell his parents, "Well, actually, he would be the teacher's helper." That's right. And started to do some nice things, and this really surprised the parents. Like、mm -hmm. that doesn't really sound like Charles. So at the parent-teacher day,、yeah. and then Lori's mom really wanted to meet Charles' mom. She was very excited and very curious. You know, what kind of mom would raise a child like Charles? Right. So she's looking around, like, hmm, there must be a mother here who's going to look a little bit embarrassed or ashamed because she has such a naughty child. But. Does she notice anybody? She doesn't notice anybody. So、mm. where's Laura? Where's Charles' mom? I mean,、mm, I really don't know. Or maybe she's proud that he's such a naughty kid. I have no idea. I guess we have to read on and find out. Okay, let's find out. I'm so curious. <gasps> Me too.、Okay. Let's go. Charles. As the days rolled by, the lunchtime tales about the misbehavior of Charles continued. Every day, Lori's parents were shocked to hear all the things that the young boy did. Even when Lori came home late, it was because the whole class stayed after school on account of something Charles had done. Today's lesson is called Charles, Part Two. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeff. And I'm Mike, and we're reading the story actually of a young boy named Lori, a sweet young kid, never did anything wrong, never hurt a fly, until he went off to kindergarten. When suddenly he came home and he was kind of a mean, nasty little kid. Something had happened. He transformed at school, and his parents got a clue when he started to talk about a classmate named Charles. Charles. Now Charles is the title of the story, and Charles. Is the bad kid at school who's been hurting his classmates, causing trouble in class, insulting the teacher, and having a very clear and bad influence on young Lori. So Lori seems to have changed into a bad kid, and we're thinking the parents are thinking from the stories they're hearing, it's this Charles boy at the school who's causing all the trouble. Now is Lori Charles, and is Charles Lori? We don't know. Yet, but let's go ahead and read on. As the days rolled by, there at school, the lunchtime tales about the misbehavior of Charles continued. Every day, there was another story detailing the shenanigans of this Charles character. And yes, every day, Lori's parents were shocked to hear all the things that the young boy did. This Charles character. Wow! What a bad seed. What a bad apple. There you go. And even when Lori came home late, it was because the whole class stayed after school on account of something Charles had done. So one day Lori came home from school an hour later, maybe than he was supposed to. When the parents asked why, it was because the whole class, everyone in the class, 
had to stay after school on account of or because of Charles. something Charles had done. So he was the bad apple, we might say, the bad apple that spoils the whole bunch. He's causing everyone in the class to become naughty and bad. The teacher's losing control, and so now they're being punished as a group because they're all doing the wrong thing. He's the bad apple that spoils that barrel. Gosh, mm -hmm. Charles. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。故事里面的 Laurie 自从上了幼稚园就变成一个叛逆小男孩，他可能是受到班上同学 Charles 的影响。那么 Laurie 他每天都跟家人分享他同学 Charles 做了哪些恶作剧。那 Laurie 的爸妈听到那些事都觉得好夸张、好震惊哦。有时候 Laurie 晚回家也是因为 Charles 做了一些事情，害全班放学要留下来。刚刚老师们说到 Charles 是那一颗坏苹果 ，bad apple， 就像我们中文说的老鼠屎啦。英文有一句谚语说 ，one bad apple。Spoils the whole bunch, 或者是 the whole barrel， 就是说一颗烂苹果毁了一整堆的苹果，也就是一颗老鼠屎坏了一锅粥。好，那在这个段落里面，我们有看到一个片语是 on account of。on account of 它表示因为、由于，是个片语介系词，后面要记得接名词。那 on account of 意思就跟 because of 和 owing to 是一样的。例如 ，the outdoor concert was cancelled。On account of the storm, 因为暴风雨的关系，那场户外演唱会被取消了。好，接回到课文中。Charles, the troublesome boy, kept on pushing others around, doing mischievous things, and using inappropriate language. Before long, Charles became a household name in Laurie's home. But it wasn't all bad. According to Laurie, there were good days too. He told them that Charles had become the teacher's helper, a development that his parents could hardly believe. Ah, Charles! What a troublesome boy he is, or is he, Lori? Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. The next sentence says, "The troublesome boy kept on pushing others around, doing mischievous things, and using." Inappropriate language. Oh、Ooh. yeah, we said he was being fresh with the teacher, using rude words, talking to the teacher in a rude, disrespectful way. He's a troublesome boy, and、Very、troublesome、naughty. is an adjective we use for things that cause trouble.、Mm -hmm. Basically, generally, we might be talking about someone's、uh, a person or their behavior. It might be causing you worry, right? It might be something that's not really trouble. Just like, wow, that's really unusual and bad in some kind of way. We could use it to talk about things. My troublesome watch is always giving me the wrong time. But generally, we're talking about someone's and someone and their behavior, their actions, the way they seem to be doing things right now. Troublesome kids will get in trouble at school, and maybe the parents will get a phone call from the teacher saying, you know, your kid's being troublesome. They're causing Causing problems. For example, Patricia did her best to rid her garden of troublesome weeds.、Mm, anyways, yes, Charles is wreaking havoc、yeah. in school. There, he's always causing trouble. He's a bad kid. He's troublesome, and he's also using inappropriate language.、Mm. This is a nice way of saying that Charles is using bad words. He might even be swearing. <gasps> anyways, if something is appropriate, it is out of place. Okay, if something is Appropriate, it makes sense. Okay, it makes sense given that time and place. If it's inappropriate, it has no place there. Like, if you go to church, churches are usually quiet places where people reflect. If you go into a church and start screaming and yelling and banging pots and pans, that's going to be inappropriate behavior. Take that somewhere else. For example, your mom's dress was completely inappropriate to wear to a child's birthday party. Yeah. Wear something that makes more sense at a child's birthday party.、Mm. Don't dress inappropriately. Dress appropriately. A wedding gown、mm. is not appropriate no, for no, a child's that, that birthday party. That doesn't make any、yeah. sense. Oh, by the way, the word inappropriate is an adjective. Now,、mm. more on Charles. Before long, Charles became a household name in Lori's home. Hmm. So they heard a lot about Charles. He became a very common name. 
for them to hear Lori was always coming home and telling them stories about how Charles had behaved at school. And of course, usually this was bad behavior. It was getting him and other kids in trouble. But then we also read, but it wasn't all bad. There were some good things that the parents heard. According to Lori, there were good days too. He told them that Charles had become the teacher's helper. Hey. A development that his parents could hardly believe. And when the parents hear this about Charles, they're like, wait, this is the same kid who what? bounced a seesaw off a girl's head? This is a development that his parents could hardly believe. Wait, this is a new thing that Charles is doing, being good? Nah, we don't believe it. I don't buy it. Don't Charles, know, yeah. he's a, a little demon of a yeah. child. A teacher would never take him on as their helper. So yes, they had a hard time believing this. They could hardly believe it. Is this the same Charles? We'll take, we'll, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll take, take a break. break. We'll learn more about that soon. Charles 是一个令人头痛的男孩啊，他继续在欺负别人，做调皮捣蛋的事，还使用不当语言。老师们提到 Charles 在学校对人不敬，还胡闹大搞破坏。这时候老师用到一个形容词是 disrespectful， 在 respect 前面加上 d i s， 然后在字尾加上 f u l， 就可以用来形容不敬的或是失礼的。还有用到 wreak havoc 这个用语 ，wreak 是拼作 w r e a k， 那么。Havoc 是拼拼作 H A V O C. Wreak havoc 表示对什么造成破坏。那其中这个 havoc 它有大破坏啊、大毁坏或是大混乱的意思。好，那这边再来看两个单词 ：troublesome, troublesome。它是形容词，形容令人烦恼的、令人头疼的或是棘手的。那么 inappropriate。Inappropriate， 它是使用不适当的、不合宜的。它的字首 i n 是表示无或是相反，然后 appropriate 是适当的，所以合在一起就是不适当的咯。我们在 inappropriate 后面加上 l y 就变成副词了。Inappropriately 表示不适当的。Jeff 老在解释单词时呢，用到片语 out of place， 它字面上的意思是不再适合的位置。那么衍生出不适当、不适宜的意思。好，故事接着提到说，不久后 ，Charles 在 Laurie 家成了家喻户晓的人。可是根据 Laurie 的说法 ，Charles 也有好的时候哦，他还有成为老师的帮手。Laurie 的爸妈听了都觉得难以置信哎。那我们刚刚说不久后 ，Charles 在他们家成了家喻户晓的人，这边用到两个重点哦。第一个是副词片语 before long， 它表示不久后、很快的。意思就跟 soon 或者是 shortly 差不多。例如 ，Kevin just left the office. He will be here before long. Kevin 刚刚离开办公室，他不久后就会到这里喽。第二个重点 ，household name， 它是指家喻户晓的人。那么 household 在这边，它是指家喻户晓的，众所皆知的。例如。The hit single made her a household name. 那首热门单曲使她成为家喻户晓的人，大家都知道她。接华课文中 ，Charles. On the day of the parent-teacher meetings, Lori's mom was excited to meet Charles's mom, mostly to see what kind of mother would raise a kid like Charles. At the meeting, however, she couldn't spot anyone being visibly anxious or embarrassed. Later, she introduced herself to the teacher, who told her that Lori had had a difficult start, but that he had started to improve after becoming her helper, even though he still had occasional lapses. When Lori's mom asked about Charles, the teacher was taken aback. She said that there wasn't anyone by that name in the kindergarten. Okay, next there are some parent-teacher meetings.、Mm. Yeah, on the day of the parent-teacher meetings, Lori's mom was excited to meet Charles's mom, mostly to see what kind of mother would raise a kid like Charles.、Mm -hmm. So she goes to the meeting, of course, to talk to the teacher, but also the other parents、mm. will be there. So we read at the meeting. However, she couldn't spot anyone being visibly anxious. 
or embarrassed.、Ooh. This is Lori's mom, kind of thinking, well, if I was Charles's mom, if I was the mom of this bad kid, I would be at the school meeting, meeting the teacher, feeling nervous. I'm sorry, my kid's so bad. I'm embarrassed about his bad behavior. We try to control him at home, but we just can't. He's a wild animal. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So she's looking for someone who looks like they're really uncomfortable and not happy to be there because their kid is so bad. That person, Laurie's mom thinks, would be visibly anxious or embarrassed. Something visible is something that you can see. It's right there in front of your eyes. It's not hard to see. It's right there. So visibly, this adverb means obviously, clearly, yes, definitely. If someone comes in to work or school or whatever, and their nose is red and they're talking like this and blowing their nose and coughing all the time, they are visibly sick. You don't have to ask. You can see it. It's very clear to see. For example. Amber was visibly unhappy after the teacher yelled at her. She was upset. She might have been crying. It wasn't hard to see her emotions. She might not have said anything. No,、nope. but you could tell by looking at her. Oof!、Yeah. Boy, is she ever upset. Now here、yeah. we've got Lori's mom. She's looking for a parent who's visibly anxious. Okay, I'm looking around. I need to see a parent who is showing signs of anxiety. Anxiety is the noun. Anxious is the adjective. If you're anxious, yes, you look like you're worried about something. Worried about something that might happen in the future. For the most part, though, if you're worried, if you're concerned about something, you're anxious. For example, Taylor is anxious about meeting his girlfriend's parents for the first time. He's worried about this. He hopes it goes well. He might be thinking about scenarios or situations where this meeting goes terribly wrong and it's making him upset. That's what it means to have anxiety or to be anxious. Anyways, back to our story.、Mm. Later, she introduced herself to the teacher. Yes, this is Lori's mom.、Mm. Okay, who told her that Lori had had a difficult start, but that he had started to improve after becoming her helper, even though he still had occasional lapses. I. Knew it. Ah,、oh, Lori、so、is Charles. I see. Of course, Lori's mom is thinking. No, Charles got better. Charles improved after becoming the teacher's helper. Charles. But the teacher is saying no. Lori improved after becoming my helper. Lori's behavior became better, even though he, Lori, still had occasional lapses. Okay, so Lori's a much better kid now. The teacher is saying to、uh, Lori's mom, he's a much better kid now. He's behaving much better. He's become my helper. But once in a while, there are occasional lapses. And once in a while, occasional. These adjectives or that phrase. Kind of mean the same thing. Sometimes, not often, not regularly, but you know, once in a while, often, a few times a week, or something like that. For example, my uncle likes to go on the occasional fishing trip. He doesn't go fishing every weekend. Maybe once every two months, or something like that, in the summer. So you know, once a few times. Next, let's finish our、mm. story. The next two sentences、mm -hmm. are going to rock your world.、Uh -oh. When Lori's mom asked about Charles, the teacher was taken aback. Huh? huh? <gasps> Charles? She said that there wasn't anyone by that name in the kindergarten. There's no Charles in our class. Who、so、are there, you talking about? By the way, that, that's pretty much total confirmation. Charles, Lori. The same person. So Lori would go home and explain、Mind、his、blown. bad behavior by blaming it on this imaginary kid, Charles, a kid he just made up to try to get out of trouble at home, even though he was getting in big trouble at school. Kids do the darndest things. Well, that's a little. Okay,、weird. this isn't very cute. <laughs> Anyways, folks, let's go ahead and read the what do you think question. Why do you think Lori? Made up the character 
of Charles. Well, to me, he made up the character to excuse his behavior, to get out of this, you know, being blamed, but also to have someone else to blame because he was acting badly.、Mm-hmm. He didn't want to take responsibility or didn't understand how bad it was, and he thought, "Hey, if I can make up a fake person and put all the blame on that person, I'll be fine." Not realizing probably that the teacher and the parents would end up. Talking、mm. to each other, kids do the darndest、oh, things.、Yeah. They really do sometimes. I hope he just、mm. stays on the right path and stops、Me. being such a Charles and、Me、more、too. of a Lori. I agree. All right, folks. With that, today's lesson has come to an end. Our story Charles is now finished, and it's time for us to say bye bye. Can we just call the story Lori? No. Okay. 故事接着写到学校家长会的这一天 ，Lori 的妈妈很想看看到底是什么样的妈妈会养出 Charles 这种小孩。不过呢，她并没有看到任何家长有明显的焦虑啊，或是尴尬的状况。结果当 Lori 的妈妈向老师自我介绍的时候，老师就对她说 ：“Lori 一开始适应困难，后来成为老师的帮手就开始进步了，虽然偶尔还是有闪失。”哎，那当 Lori 的妈妈问起 Charles 这个小孩呢，才发现幼稚园里面根本没有这个学生。Charles 老师说，这下可以确定，可以肯定了，原来 Charles 就是 Lori，Lori 就是 Charles。好，老师用到 confirmation 这个字就表示确认、确定，它是拼作 C O N F I R M A T I O N confirmation。好，那我们最后来看三个单词 ，visibly。Visibly, 它是副词，表示明显的或是显而易见的。那么 anxious, anxious， 它表示焦虑不安的。那它的名词是 anxiety, a n x i e t y, anxiety 表示焦虑或是焦虑症。那焦虑也许是想到很糟糕的情境。这时候老师用到 scenario 这个字。S C E N A R I O scenario 表示设想的情境或是可能发生的局面。我们再来看 occasional。occasional 它是形容词，形容偶尔的或是间或的、有时候的。那我们也可以用片语 once in a while 来表达有时或是偶尔。好，那么以上这些讲解，同学们别走开，马上回来哦。<笑>欢迎来到英文游戏大解析，我是 Holly。I'm Shane. I like your technique. Yeah, thank you. Very smooth. <笑> OK， 我们今天的字有哪些 ？Two words. Skill. Skill. Technique. Technique. 第一个 skill 呢，什么意思呢 ？So skill 就是 the means something that you know how to do well. Oh, okay. So it's just your skills. So you don't just do a thing, but you can do it well. The new skill I am learning this summer is cooking. Oh, I'm learning the new skill I am learning this summer is cooking. Oh, I'm learning the new skill I am learning this summer is cooking. Oh, I'm learning the new skill I am learning this summer is cooking. Oh, I'm learning the new skill I am learning this summer is cooking. 好好做，你要你要学这个 skill。The second one is technique。啊 ，OK， 所以它呢是技巧，做事的方法。Yeah, right. It's really about how you do this thing, but the method or the way you do it. Yes. So, for example, you could say, "I'll show you a technique for making the perfect cup of coffee." 啊、oh, ，OK， 我来示范一下，来泡出一杯完美的咖啡的方式。Yes.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if you're really hoping that your new skill is going to be speaking perfect English,、uh-huh. then I think we have something for you. Ah,、oh, I know, live action. That's、It's、right. Perfect for you. Yeah. Okay. I see here that you wrote taking naps as one of your skills. Can you tell me more about that? Um, sure. I'm really good at it, and I can fall asleep anywhere, and I can fall asleep very fast. Watch. Miss Wong. Excuse me, Miss Wong. <gasps> Hello.、Uh, good morning. So, did you have a nice rest? I-, I did. Thank you very much. Pretty cool, right?、Uh, do you want to know my technique? Yeah, sure. Tell me your technique. Well, I just imagine I'm already working at this very boring job, and I can fall asleep immediately.
Thank you.